Since aircrafts are constantly exposed to atmospheric conditions, they face hidden dangers. Perhaps one of the most important of these dangers is the risk of icing. Throughout the history of aviation, icing has endangered the flight safety of many aircraft and has led to crash of many aircraft. Being unpredictable and insidious puts it in the category of the most dangerous atmospheric conditions. However, with the developing anti-ice techniques, the aircraft makes it very easy to detect and remove icing on the ground and in the air. For this purpose, pre-flight detailed ice and snow cleaning of flight line technicians and ground cleaners is vital. Because there have been many sad events in the history of aviation where an icing that cannot be detected visually on the aircraft can endanger the flight's safety. Even though the aircrafts take off clean from ice, the low temperature, high humidity in the clouds, and water vapor can trigger rapid icing. Often on aircrafts without an icing detection system, icing on the cockpit windshield and windshield wipers can be visually detected by the crew. So, under what conditions does icing occur, let's take a look at it. The formation of icing depends on certain atmospheric conditions. For example, icing can occur at temperatures below 10 degrees Celsius and apparent humidity on the ground, and in humid environments below minus 40 degrees Celsius at the high altitude flight. Icing in the air primarily occurs on the wings, horizontal and vertical stabilized leading edges, engine air intakes, propellers, pitot tubes, static ports and antennas. Icing can cause serious negatives to the aircraft. The first of these negativities is the increase in weight of the aircraft due to icing. It also reduces the ice lift force, which forms in layers on the aerodynamic surfaces of the aircraft, by up to 40%. When the ice layers formed on the leading edges of the engine spinner and engine air inlet break and enter the engine, serious damage occurs in the compressor section and as a result of, the engine may stop suddenly. Pitot tubes and static ports freezing and sending may wrong data to the cockpit occurs as another negative situation. An aircraft exposed to all these negative situations may lose control and crash in seconds. The most important point to be considered about icing in flight is prevented icing before it occurs. Because it has been seen that if the icing reaches a certain amount, the protection systems do not provide much benefit anymore. Although icing can cause such negative effects, Icing can be eliminated thanks to the anti-icing systems of modern aircraft and pre-flight de-icing methods. In the meaning of preventing icing, there are used many methods in aviation these are hot compressor air, resistive de-icing, de-icing boot structures, and chemical de-icers. Now we will try to examine these methods in turn. Pneumatic systems are anti-ice systems that are widely used in gas turbine engines of military and commercial aircraft. Anti-ice systems usually take the hot air necessary for their operation from the last stages of the engine compressor. The hot air taken is directed to the leading edges of the wing, flight control surfaces, engine front parts and other areas, to prevent icing before it occurs. In this video, we will simply explain the operation of the anti-ice system of the Boeing aircraft CFM-56 engine. The presence of icing on Boeing aircraft can be detected visually and electrically in two ways. Visual detection of icing is ice formation on the cockpit windshield and wipers and formed. In addition, icing that can be seen on the wings and engine inlets is within the scope of visual detection. This guides pilots and technicians in the commissioning of anti-ice systems. The electrical detection of icing is done through the temperature probe or ice detector probes located in the left nose of the aircraft. This probe detects the temperature of the air flowing over the fuselage of the aircraft. When the risk of icing starts, it converts the temperature into analog electrical signals via an electronic control unit and turns on the amber-colored icing warning lamp in the cockpit. At this point, the pilot realizes that there is a risk of icing on surfaces of the aircraft. In this case,
the pilot will need to activate the switches on two separate panels to protect the engine and wings from ice. These switches are the engine anti-ice panel on the cockpit overhead panel and the on-off switches on the wing anti-ice panel. The hot air required for the anti-ice system is taken from the 5th and 9th stages of the CFM 56 engine high-pressure compressor. In order to prevent icing of the engine cowl part, the delivery of hot air to this area is controlled by the engine anti-ice panel located on the cockpit overhead panel. For this purpose, the switch of the relevant engine on the panel is brought to the on position, in this case the cowl valve open lamp comes on. When the cowl valve is opened, the hot air from the compressor reaches the engine cowl part and heats this area. The cowl anti-ice lamp on the same panel is a warning and comes on in case of high pressure in the system. The air used for heating the cowl area does not return to the system and is discharged into the atmosphere through a hole in the bottom of the cowl. On the wing anti-ice panel, there is one switch for each blade, and when the switches are turned on, the wing anti-ice bleed valves open, allowing the engine compressor air to be transmitted to the blades. The air used to heat the blades is then discharged to the atmosphere. Although the situation is slightly different in military aircraft engines, the method is actually the same. In F-16 aircraft, the ice prevention system is managed by an electronic control unit based on the position of a switch with off, auto, and on positions. In the off position of the key, the system was disabled by the pilot. In this case, the anti-ice system will not work at all. If the switch is on, the system was activated. While in the auto position the switch, when the icing sensor located in the aircraft air intake detects icing, the inlet icing lamp located on the caution panel in the cockpit lights up together with the master caution warning lamp together and the pilot realizes the situation. In this case, with the opening of the anti-ice valve, the hot air taken from the fifth stage of the compressor is sent to the inlet guide vanes and front center cone. If the pilot has set the anti-ice switch to auto, each time icing is felt, the anti-ice system is automatically activated and deactivated. The pilot does not need to do anything. The strut and icing sensor located in front of the engine air intake is electrically heated. Resistive de-icing anti-icing systems are used in reciprocating engine turboprop engine propeller aircrafts or helicopters. This system is generally used in aircraft with movable structures such as rotary blades and where hot compressor air cannot be sent to these areas. Just as in other aircraft, Icing can occur on propeller aircraft and helicopter rotary blades when negative atmospheric conditions occur. As a result, the amount of thrust produced by the rotary blades decreases, vibration of at the aircraft or helicopter increases, and an aerodynamic imbalance occurs. In order to prevent this, electrothermal electric heaters added to the propeller leading edge surfaces prevent icing on the propellers. These heaters are placed on the leading edges of the propeller, that is, in the areas most susceptible to icing. In helicopters, electric heaters are placed on the main and tail rotor parts to prevent ice. In addition to resistive de-icing, at propeller aircrafts and helicopters hot air taken from the compressor part of the engine can sent to the air inlet, will brakes, through manifolds to prevent icing. Resistive de-icing system disadvantage requires very high electricity power. The icing boots system is especially used in medium-sized aircraft. Icing boots system elements are placed on the wing's leading edges. At some aircrafts can be placed horizontal and vertical stabilized leading edges. Unlike other systems, ice formation is allowed in these sections first and then the icing boots are inflated these sections are cleared of ice. Detection of icing is usually by visual or ice detectors. The system is activated by turning on the de-ice switch in the cockpit. Hot and compressed air taken from the engine compressor part is used for the operation of the system. With this air, the artificial rubber-based structure on the wing and tail leading edges is inflated. As a result, 
The ice is braked by the effect of inflation and is thrown backwards into the atmosphere with the aerodynamic effect. Although these systems are quite old systems, they are still used. The disadvantages are that these inflatable structures need to be replaced every few years, and the ice breaking effect is significantly reduced in case of an air leak from the system. Although the aircrafts prevent icing at certain points with their own systems, external icing and anti-icing processes are also applied in order to protect the inaccessible areas on the aircraft from ice. With these methods applied to military or commercial passenger aircraft and other aircraft, first of all, it is ensured that the aircraft is generally de-iced and re-icing is prevented for a short time. De-icing is the process of removing factors such as ice, frost and snow accumulated on the outer surface of the aircraft. After the aircrafts are de-iced and cleared of ice and snow, anti-icing is applied to prevent the aircraft from re-icing. The aircraft should take off shortly after this process is applied for not be re-icing again. This is because the anti-icing process has a short duration of action. A wide variety of chemicals and hot water can be used in de-icing and anti-icing processes. As can be seen, every precaution is taken by the ground and flight crew to ensure that our aircraft can fly safely in very cold weather. With these measures, flight safety is maximized, while passengers are left to sit back and enjoy the flight. With this video, I tried to explain the ice prevention systems and de-icing methods used in aircrafts. If you like my video, don't forget to click like, comment and subscribe. See you in new videos, goodbye.